Hi guys, it's Jason here. Today I want to talk about voltages for capacitors. It's one of the most common questions I get. I get emails quite frequently, people leave comments on my videos and they are trying to get into modding or building amplifiers and one of the first hurdles they hit is what voltages do I get for the capacitors? Okay, so in an amplifier, you would have, and I'm going to go to my iPad here, coupling caps, cathode bypass capacitors, uh, bright caps, and filter caps. And for each of these, you can look at the values, and I talk a lot about in my videos of different values that you can use, you know, 22 nanofarad, 470 picofarad, and so on and so forth. But I never really talk about the voltages, not very often, and it is an important factor of course right so when you're trying to put together your parts list and you're going to order these things you really do need to know what voltages to get part of figuring out what voltages to get is to understand why they need to be a certain voltage right so in this clip we're going to try and uh, pass on some information regarding that number one coupling caps so let me draw real quick here the first gain stage of an amplifier right so you can imagine if this is our input jack here i'm going to draw it as a schematic so down here this is ground and this is the input jack this is where you'll be plugging your guitar in to this part and you'd come along here you'd normally have a grid stopper let's put that in as 33k and then we go into our first triode right the first gain stage and let's draw this in with our B plus up here. So this is our high voltage supply. And I'll just draw this in as a very kind of standard, some standard values here, 100K on the plate resistor down here to a 2.7K cathode resistor. Let's put a bypass cap in here. I'm just going to use standard kind of Marshall values here, 0 0.68 microfarad. And then we'll have a coupling capacitor coming off that plate, right, 100K there. And let's put this in as, you know, 0 0.022 microfarad, so that's 22 nanofarad. Okay, and let's bring this down into a gain pot. So this is a give us a one meg gain pot here and let's put a bright cap in okay and this bright cap is 0 0.001 so one nanofarad or a thousand picofarad also on the b plus we're going to have some filtering so up here i'm going to draw an electrolytic so put the plus sign there, an electrolytic cap, and let's call this 50 microfarad, right? So that's kind of part of your filter network on the B-plus line. Now, what voltages do these capacitors need to be, right? So what I've drawn in here are the four types here, right? So the coupling cap, this is this guy here, put an underline it. Cathode bypass cap is this one here, 0 0.068. The bright cap is our 0 0.001. And our filter cap is that 50 microfarad, uh, which is right there. Let's look at the bypass cap first. Okay, 0 0.68 microfarad, that's quite a high value with respect to the capacitance. And if you have a look at some of the old, you know, Marshalls, right, the old kind of... Uh, marshals from the 70s and in into, into the late 60s, you'll see that the, the bypass caps that they were using, 0.68 bypass caps, the mustards, they were huge. You know, they were by far the biggest capacitor that was in, um, in terms of the mustard caps, by far the biggest because the value was of capacitance is so high um, and they were still using a relatively high voltage at that point. So to understand what voltage this capacitor here, this 0 0.68 bypass cap needs to be, what we need to really do here is we need to understand, I'll just change the color here on my pen, we want to understand 
um, what the voltage is at this point in the amp this point here. The voltage rating of the cap simply needs to be high enough to cope with the largest voltage that will, it will be exposed to with respect to its reference point. And for the bypass cap here, the reference point is ground. Okay, so what is the voltage differential between ground, zero volts, and this point here in the amp? Well, uh, if you look at any voltage readings um, in an amplifier, like this, you know, where you have anything from a, a standard kind of cathode setup like this all the way up to a cold clipper where you might have a 10K or even a 39K in a Soldano, you're really only going to get, you know, at maximum four volts here normally. Often it's only one to two volts DC. Okay. So this cap here, it does not need to be a large value at all and commonly you will find an amplifiers an amplifier design that guys are using um kind of 63 volt rated caps here simply because it's just a very common value uh to get right so in terms of the you know the supply chain and ordering these things you'll find 63 volts but you can go lower you can use you know you could probably go down to 20, maybe even a little bit less. Um, perfectly safe. Okay, let's now talk about uh, the coupling cap, which is the next one as I moved here on the diagram from left to right. So our 0.022 microfarad. Now, um, this guy here will be exposed to higher voltages. Okay, so... Its voltage reference from here, from this point in the amp, to this side, right? So basically from one side of the cap to the other. Now the voltage at point number two here, which I've just put an X on, is, you know, this is zero volts at this point. And at point one, which I've just put an X, that voltage there will vary depending on the value of this uh, plate resistor here, which is 100k in our example, as well as the voltage of the B plus at this point, okay, the node that's supplying uh, the, the DC to this triode. But values in here typically would range from, you know, 140 volts through to you know, maybe uh, two, f maybe let's call it 300. I was going to say 250, probably to 300. It's in that kind of region. Can be lower, can be higher. This guy, you can't use a 63 volt cap like on the bypass cap, right? You've got to think about, okay, what voltages has this been exposed to? Um, 630 volt rated caps here on your coupling caps safe as houses, right? Safe all day. Most commercial amplifier designs that are out in the market that you'll buy today are using 400 volt caps here, which is generally safe, right? And I say generally, um, it's only becomes a, a bit of an issue using a 400 volt rated cap here if people are going to run the amp with no tubes in it whatsoever, so if you take your tube amplifier and you pull all the tubes out of it, all the power tubes, all the preamp tubes, and you turn it on and you run it out of standby, then the voltages, the B plus line, that's going through the whole amplifier from the power section all the way through to the preamp is going to be high. It's going to be basically set at the B plus, the highest B plus number in the amp, which in a, in a you know, 50 to 100 watt amp, kind of EL34, 6L6 style amplifier, very common to be 440, 460, 470 volts, somewhere around there, give or take, right? So you're kind of exposing your caps to a higher voltage than they would ordinarily like. It's one of the reasons why, personally, I never run an amp with no tubes in it at all. I'll pull power tubes out sometimes and run it just with the preamp tubes in, just for testing and so on. But very rarely will I run an amp with no 
tubes in it whatsoever because it's just it's putting it puts too much stress on the components in the amp. Okay, moving to uh, our bright cap here, which is in this example is you know one nanofarad, thousand picofarad. Um, you don't really need to be too concerned about the voltage here. It's more about what's kind of most easily uh, accessible. And uh, most amplifiers you'll find will be using ceramics type caps um, in these kind of bright cap style scenarios. So, you know, it's very common in the Marshall. We used to look at the old Marshalls, even the new ones, right? The bright caps that they're using there, 470 picofarad, 1000 picofarad, 4700. And they have been for a long time and, and are still kind of ceramic style. And simply because of the way that those caps are made and how they're available, it's very common to find those at 1 kV. It's 1,000 volts, right, which is super high. They need not be that high. But again, for, for ease of just ordering these things and getting them, 1 kV is, is, is all good. You can go lower. Uh, no problem there. And you can use film caps, right? So you can use like a coupling cap that you might be using here for this 0 0.022 value. You can use, you can reuse those caps in these kind of bright cap style positions as well. No problem. Uh, lastly, let's look at the filter cap in this diagram, which is a 50 microfarad cap to ground. This is an, an electrolytic cap. So this is uh, these are rated much higher, right? They have to be because your B plus line uh, at this point in the amplifier, you know, it could still be 400 volts DC. Maybe probably a bit lower, probably more like, you know, 300 in this kind of preamp node or whatever. But typically from a design perspective, you will choose an electrolytic cap uh, and you'll use it most of the way through the amplifier from the preamp all the way through down to the power amp, well, certainly down to the phase inverter node anyway. So you kind of stick with a value that uh, is safe enough to use throughout the whole amplifier. So very common to see in a filter cap, 450 to 500 volts. Um, once you get like a 50 microfarad electrolytic cap, rated at that voltage, they start to become quite large. And so those are the large filter caps that you see. And back in the vintage Marshalls, they were the big the big blue can caps that you would see mounted on the chassis. And on a more modern amplifier, you'll find them mounted onto a printed circuit board. And they are about a third or less of the size that the old Marshall ones used to be. But they do the same job. Let's now have a look at a schematic. What I'm looking at here is... Uh, this is the Fender EVH5150, and I've just got a you know a part of the schematic here that helps to illustrate some of the points that I've just been making. And let's just focus in on this part here. We've got a couple of triodes in this. Well, there's three triodes in a row here in this part of the amplifier. So many gain stages in this amp channel three. It's just ridiculous. But this is a great schematic because it shows all of the voltages right so uh, voltages voltages in terms of what you would expect to read on your multimeter at this point or at this point in the amplifier or this point in the amplifier and all of the caps have their voltage ratings on them as well so in reference to my hand drawn schematic uh so here's our you know our grid stopper resistor on the triode gain stage here's a 100k plate resistor this one here is a 1.8k cathode resistor and you can see here's a, a cathode bypass cap and this is a one microfarad it's an electrolytic bypass cap which is fine and it's rated at 100 volts and you can see though at this point in the amplifier it's only exposed to 1.45 volts dc so you know it's way overrated, but this is done for convenience because if you're using an electrolytic cap uh, for, at one microfarad, that's going to be really small anyway. So, you know, 100, 100 volts is fine. This coupling cap here is 0.001 microfarad, and you can see it's rated at 400. 
as I mentioned, right? So 400 is kind of the minimum you'd want to use here. 630 is a bit safer, but 400 is fine. Well, this is a, we didn't talk about one of these, right? This is a plate snubber. So it's a cap that sits across a plate resistor, and you can see they've got that rated at 400. Plate snubbers, I will use ceramics in a lot of the work that I do, and those are rated at 1K. Um, so nice and safe. I'll just go back a bit. Here's a bright cap. It's a 0 0.001 bright cap, and you can see right there's our gain pot. You can see this cap here. It's probably the same cap that they're using across at C22. From a supply chain perspective, it just makes sense to grab those. I, again, I use uh, I do use a lot of ceramics in the bright cap position, and everything that I get is rated at 1K. Um, but you can see Fender are using 400 volts here in that position, which is which is okay. Let's go down and have a look at just the filter cap. And so just to give you some bearings here, what we've got is, let me zoom out here, okay. What they've drawn here on the left here is the power transformer. And what we're seeing uh, here is a high voltage wind on the secondary into the standby switch, out of the standby switch into a bridge rectifier where every diode in the, rec in the rectifier has a snubber cap on it. Let's not worry about those. Let's just have a look at the filter network here. These filter caps, okay, 47 microfarad. So, you know, 50, 47 is obviously a common value. And all of these in the mains, these are all the mains filter caps. And here's the filter caps for the screen supply node. They're all rated at 500. Now, these are all in series, you know, these, that's in series with that, that's in series with that. Obviously those guys are then in parallel, but you see these resistors here, 220K, 220K. Those are just balancing resistors to ensure that each cap gets an equal supply of the voltage. So if it's, let's call this 500 volts DC, B plus 492, let's call it 500 for convenience, then we're getting 250 volts across each of these guys, which these resistors are because they're the same value resistor, they're in ensuring that each cap gets its fair share you know, of the 500 to 250 each. Likewise on the screens where we have those guys in series, we have the balancing resistors there. Just as an aside, you'll notice in this amp, the 390 ohm 10 watt resistor sitting here, uh, this amp has no choke, no filter choke, right? So in a, in a uh, I don't know, I was going to say more conventional. Is it conventional? Don't know. Anyway, um, in a more traditional design, you would see a filter choke here, um, which is certainly I prefer. I'm, I'm not a big fan of these uh, choke resistors in, in amplifiers, but anyway, be that as it may. And you can see here what we've got here is it's a smaller value cap, 22 microfarad into the preamp, right? So this is the this is the phase inverter node here, and then a couple of preamp nodes. And you can see as we go down from the B plus supply and the power amp all the way down to the B plus nodes and the preamp, our node voltages get lower and lower and lower and lower because these dropping resistors, 4.7K, 10K, 10K, are dropping the B plus down as it goes. And so for these last few nodes here, they've dropped down to 450. Again, you could use 500s all the way here. Yeah, but drop down to 450, these components are probably a few cents cheaper. Um, no problem there. And as I said, you know, this is kind of one of the reasons why I would never choose to run an amp with no tubes in it whatsoever because if you have nothing in the amplifier that's drawing current um, then these voltages will not drop and they'll be it'll just be sit the b plus will sit right across the whole amp and it's just it's just it's very stressful <laughs> for your amp right so my advice always keep your preamp tubes in at a minimum if you're doing some testing anyway guys i hope this is helpful um Please leave some comments in the video. If there's any follow-up questions, I'll try and answer them down there or any other videos, any other topics you would like me to cover in videos like this. 
just let me know and I'll see you soon.